Introducing Paddy Power's Beat the Drop. We're giving every customer 30 days free entry and a grand up front. It's up to you to keep it. All you have to do is answer 10 questions correctly. Play now at beatthedrop.paddypower.com. Light the candle, tiger! Hi there, a warm welcome to the Racing Post Golf Postcast. It's the last one of the year, so let's hope we can make it a good one. It's Bruce Millington, Steve Palmer, and Ian McLaughlin, the crew, getting back together one more time before we break for Christmas, back in the new year. Um, but before then, we will look back on last weekend, a um, lot of decent action around the globe. We'll look back on the whole golfing year and then we will look ahead to two, two tournaments this week and we will also cast our glance to 2019. Okay, so last weekend, very quickly, John Rahm was the hero hero. Someone called Kurt Kitayama, who I still haven't heard of, won the Mauritius Open. And Cameron Smith won the Australian PGA Championship. And Steve, I should imagine that last outcome saved your bacon to a large extent, didn't it? Very much so, John. I mean, that was the uh, first tournament that finished, wasn't it? So uh, at one beautiful stage, the million pound drop was uh, was off to the perfect start. One down, three to go. And then I just needed Nicholas Colsarts to shoot a 55 in Mauritius <laughs> to uh, to keep the ball rolling. So, um, yeah, I thank thank God Cam Smith won that because um, otherwise it would have been a, would have been a brutal week. I mean, Nicholas Colsarts, very disappointing. I mean, we, we talked about his putting last week, didn't we? Pre-tournament concern and... Uh, I don't know if you watched round one of the Mauritius Open. Absolute torture. He's setting up chance after chance and just missing missing short putts and um, quickly got tailed off. And then Ricky Fowler, we were all over Fowler and the hero. He finished fifth. Very sluggish opening round, uh, 72, and then uh, was playing catch-up all week. So, yeah, yeah. Thank God for Cam Smith. Oh, so did you break even or a small loser or what? I would have broken even if I didn't have my little uh, problem with in-running golf oh, wages. God, I, I've, go. I've got, what I've got a... you back, Fowler, at 1.02 <laughs> or something? <laughs> I've got a New Year's resolution already in place to not uh, bet in running because yeah, it, it would have been a small profit if, had I not uh, dabbled in running, but I ended up losing six grand. So, um, yeah, New Year's resolution is to not bet in running. And, and, and new, another New Year's resolution is to not take the European Tour website uh, uh, scores as, 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 as gospel because a couple of times they made um, scoring errors which cost me money in running so uh, yeah lots of New Year's resolutions. Okay Ian how was it for you both personally and for the firm I should imagine Kurt Kitty Armour was any price you liked wasn't he? Yeah, in terms of the firm, it was a it was a cracking week. Ram wasn't really found in the market. Kitayama, as you, as you mentioned, kind of unher unheralded player. Uh, Cam Smith was a was a decent enough loser for us, given Steve's uh, glowing uh, glowing reference to him on Wednesday in in the post. Um, personally, it was a frustrating week. We had Victor Perez as well. Yeah. Uh, he was poised to make a big challenge. He took the lead after 13 holes on Saturday, and we're like, right, we're on here. And then Fowler, as Steve mentioned, the slow start Thursday. That front nine all week at the Hero was just getting them. I think he was plus three through five holes on Sunday and still managed to finish a shot out of the places. It was just, yeah, very frustrating week. Slight loss for me in the week. I didn't get too massively involved, so that was a good thing. Do you remember, Steve, on Saturday I texted you to tell you that Perez was banging the wrecking, didn't I? You were at well, Christmas yeah. fate, weren't you? This was it, yeah. Three birdies in a row, wasn't it? Followed by a double bogey. I mean, it's the, the, the roller coaster ride of golf betting is, is brutal. I mean, I'm looking forward to this two week break. I mean, obviously, I'm putting my heart and soul into the last couple, but um, <laughs> yeah, I, I need a break. How was the Christmas? <laughs> Christmas fate, though. <laughs> I mean, they're tedious affairs, aren't they? I mean, I I try and get into the spirit of things, but um, I'm a bit more like the Grinch than the. Uh, than, There's normally uh, some than nice Christmas catering, lover. though, isn't it? Normally, I had a couple of complimentary mince pies from um, some some churchgoers. Yeah, they were trying to lure me into the the, the next church uh, gathering and um, gave me a couple of mince pies. So that was the highlight. But um, yeah, once Perez had made that double bogey, I just lost all sort of motivation for life. <laughs> I bet. Let's look back on. 2018, great golfing year, and Steve, obviously fantastic for you. Probably a record year in terms of, of the amount of money you've taken the bookies for, isn't it? Yeah, very much so, yeah. What was your one single golden moment in all that time? Oh, well, I think Tiger Woods winning the Tour Championship because it had that beautiful combination of, um, you know, w without a bet, I would have loved it. You know, Tiger walking up the 18th triumphantly with the gallery swarming behind him. You know, it, was the, it was the golfing highlight of the year and I also won several bags of sand in the process. So, Absolutely um, super. Yeah, yeah, that would be the one, yeah. And Ian, what about you? What was your best from a betting perspective and your favourite golf moment? 
Yeah, I'll echo Steve. It meshed perfectly. It was Tiger uh, getting back into the winner's enclosure to the Tour Championship. Like, after all his trial and tribulations that I got on his personal life, the issue with his back, like 12 months before that win, he had his back fused together. He couldn't get out of bed for two months. That following November, he was arrested for a DUI due to taking painkillers. Like I said at the time when we came back to recap it that week, it was probably the greatest sporting comeback in history, and I still feel that way. And also, as Steve mentioned, it was a great week for us as we both put him up around the 12 to 1 mark, so we made a bit of cash out of it too which is great. Lovely stuff. Okay, well, let's look ahead to 2019 before we look at this week's tournaments. Uh, obviously, we've got the uh, Masters at its usual venue at Augusta. The America, the US Open is at Pebble Beach, Steve, isn't it? An iconic venue. That's it. Well, we've got the US PGA second, didn't we? They've reordered the majors this year, so they're really what? compressed. Yeah, we've got a really compressed schedule. We've got the Masters in April, US PGA in May. Why? US Open in June and Open Championship in July. July is the finale now. So What's going on there? They're always fiddling with it. Um, just they've just compressed the schedule um, um, because. Um, well, what, what 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 reasons have been given here? You know, I'm not sure they, what the reasons. They were saying the PJ Tour were saying they want the playoffs finished before all the peak US sports start again on primetime TV. So the likes of the NFL, the NBA, oh, right. baseball playoff season. So they want the playoffs finished by the end of August. So, so does that mean that September and October will become a golfing wilderness? No, It'll Europe become... Europe are going to take advantage of that, obviously, and they've packed in like Wentworth have moved to September they have a lot of great tournaments in September and obviously they have to finish then the Rolex series four events between middle of October to the start of November so the European Tour have a big window now to take advantage and get more players from the US Tour coming over and playing those big events for them so it could actually be it actually could work better as a whole world tour not saturation on the US Tour like there usually is at that time of year so mm, interesting okay lads give me one major tip I just want to know if I was going to have a bet now, uh, who should I back for which major? Steve, you go first. Well, you know I like to take each week as it comes, so I, yeah. I, would, I would focus on the first major. I would focus on the Masters if I was going to have a long-range bet. And I think John Rahm has got an excellent chance of, of, of winning the green jacket. I mean, he was fourth last year in his second visit to Augusta. He loves the course, suits his attacking style of play, and he's fresh from what was a, a, a masterclass last week in the Hero World Challenge. I mean, he cruised the victory there, flawless final round. And um, What about the I old temperament, though? Yeah, I think it, I think he's better at Augusta than any of the others because you know Augusta is like a birdie and eagle course. You, you, it's, it's a low scoring track. Whether the others are more of a test of fortitude. So I think Ram's best chance of a major is the Masters. And um, I mean Ricky Fowler almost won the Masters after winning the Hero last year. So um, yeah, I think Ram could go very close there. What about you, Ian? I'll give you one for the US Open at Pebble Beach and it's Xander Shoffley. Uh He's only my bet so far looking at the 2019 majors and it's him at 6-6-1. Six, six he's developed into somewhat of a US Open specialist. He was fifth in 2017 and sixth last year. His second at the Open in Carnoustie in July gave me an indication of his affiliation with Lynx style golf. Obviously Pebble Beach is one of the most iconic Lynx golf courses in America. He was born in San Diego, California, grew up playing on Puana Green so he'll be more than suited to the setup as a whole and he'll be one to be looking to top up over the winter months. Devastated too, you haven't back Cameron champ for the Masters. I backed him in your say-so and you haven't even had a bean on. <laughs> he's not I will. Yet. He's, not he's not qualified yet, but I will. But he, Bruce, don't worry, I will. The game now is because <laughs> all the odds are there for every major, so you can have your acca. There are plenty of firms who will, will accept the acca. So do, would, you, would you like a, uh, a an oh, yeah, acca come right on. Get, right yeah, now? give us a, well, should we have a um, life-changing Yankee or something? Yeah, because yeah, you, you could have £10 acca or turn half a million quid easily. And just remind us, we've got the uh, USPJ at Bethpage Black, haven't we? Yeah, we've got the USPGA at Beth Page Black, which is t normally a US Open venue. It's a US Open venue in 2002 and 2009, and um, FedEx Cup playoff venue, I think, a couple of times for the Barclays. Okay, um, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to say the major, and you two are just going to say the player. Masters, okay. Steve. John Rahm. Ian. Cameron Champ. A USPGA, Steve. Brooks Kupka. Ian. Justin Thomas. US Open, Steve. Justin Johnson. And Ian. Xander Shaffley. And British Open, you get arrested for saying that, Open. Yeah, we invented the game, all right, whatever. Uh, Steve. Let the candle, Tiger! <laughs> That's Tiger Woods. And Ian. Mark Leishman. Mark Leishman, okay, interesting. And it's at Port Rush, Steve. Have you sacked it off or are you going to go? I've sacked it off, yeah. I'm too far behind the eight ball, whatever that means. I uh, don't think I'm going to get uh, accommodation there. And, um, and you'll yeah, have a, I, hopefully you'll have a, a sun by then as well, won't well, you? Well, yeah, that's it. I've got, you know, the sun is terribly time, really, with all due respect to him. He's coming in May, um, God willing, God willing. I can't take anything for granted. He's hopefully coming in May, which obviously is the... Um, 
you know, it's right in the heart of major season now. And yeah. a very compressed, very compressed schedule now. So I'll probably be working about 200 days in a row. I probably won't see him until uh, the end of the <laughs> Open Championship. <laughs> You can't leave poor Nicola in the lurch, can you? <laughs> no, no, no. I've, I've got some difficult work-life balance there, but I'll, I'll do my best. OK, well, let's hope it's a great year next year. Give me one breakthrough player to uh, note that we've never heard of is going to go on and be fantastic next year. Steve. Oh, blimey, that you've never heard of. No, that's, that's a tricky well, one. Well, don't forget, I'm I mean, quite I... ignorant. I haven't heard of lots of people. So. Well, on December the 20th, early, early advert for our um, golf season 2019 preview in the Racing Post, on December, Thursday, December 20th, we'll have all sorts of uh, fantastic, okay. uh, fantastic advice in there. But, I mean, I think Cameron Champ and Aaron Wise are the two best youngsters on the US Tour, and I think they'll win lots of tournaments next year. Um, and I think Thomas Peters and Thomas Detry will come on for their World Cup success. I think Peters and Detry are finally start fulfilling their, their promise in, on the European Tour. And Ian? Yeah, Cameron Champ uh, will be definitely one of the PGA Tour. Sung JM as well. He kind of showed up for a while in uh, Las Vegas there a couple of weeks ago. I think he'll have a big season. The European Tour, I'd probably echo Steve with Thomas Detry. I think he's ready to really kick on. He's, he looks, a, he looks a, a world star in the making. And finally, one golfer that you've decided you're not going to be backing again. You've just had enough of backing them week after week. They keep letting you down. Who have you finally given up on, Steve? Wouldn't go that far, but I think Justin Rose will have a very disappointing year because uh, rumours are rife that he's switching clubs to uh, Honmar, and I think that's a mad decision, and I think that'll cost him cost him titles. And I, and I also think Tommy Fleetwood's got equipment issues because he's been using the same set of Nike clubs for, for donkey's years, and um, they're getting a bit worn, and he's running out. You know, Nike don't produce uh, golf equipment anymore, so I think Fleetwood and Rose have got some equipment issues. Oh, and Ian... Uh, I think it'd be Rory McIlroy anything sub 12 to 1 in the tournament I, my fingers have been burnt a couple of times with him this year so I'll, I'll wait till he gets out to a price before I really take a chance on now because I backed him at the likes of 8 to 1 10 to 1 and 12 to 1 for these tournaments and he's absolutely bombed out on three occasions so yeah I, I need to get a bigger price on Rory before I trust him again OK well Sunday was the last time I backed Ricky Fowler you can do one Ricky. oh my goodness not in mate, just very strong stupid word. orange top and your silly oh, hat my and your moustache and your flamboyance Ooh. win a well, few tournaments and then you can start dressing up all right the moustache is for charities for um saving the saving the world near prostate cancer and whatnot so. oh is it yeah yeah november isn't it november. Well, apart from the moustache i like that apart from the moustache can i just say one more thing before we get on to this week's tournament of course you can the tiger slam is feasible oh god because, because there's only there's only one course that he's uh, there's only one course of the majors next year that he's never won on really he's never won a major on yeah he's won the u.s open at beth page black he's won the u.s open at pebble beach um and port rush is the only is the only course of the four well he obviously he's never played there that he's never won on so um what price is the slam in I don't know. If you went off, we'd probably give you 500 to 1,000 to 1, depending, I'd say. I should think so, too. It's feasible. It's feasible. Is it? OK, yeah. we're back with this week's previews. Introducing Paddy Power's Beat the Drop. We're giving every customer 30 days free entry and a grand up front. It's up to you to keep it. All you have to do is answer 10 questions correctly. Play now at beatthedrop.paddypower.com. Be the right club today. Welcome back. Let's start this week's uh, look at the two tournaments with what's going on in America. It's called the QBE Shootout. Would I be right in thinking this used to be the Shark Shootout, Steve, or the Franklin yeah. Templeton Shark Shootout, wasn't it? Very much so, very much so. Been around for a while now. Yeah, 12 teams of two okay. uh, competing over three rounds. First round is Scramble. So uh, the best ball chosen after every shot, and you play from there. Second round is greensome, so they, they both drive, and you pick your best drive, and then it's all turn at shot from there. Third round is straight better ball, so four balls in play, best score in the pair counts. Wow, so, that's complicated. Um, yeah, obviously, well, it's, it's super low scores are returned every year. You know, it, it's a really easy format, and the course is easy, no rough, wide fairway, so um, yeah, hot putters are essential. And Lexi Thompson plays in this, doesn't she? Lexi Thompson plays with Tony for now. Can I just confirm she would play off the ladies' tees, presumably? No, yeah? no, 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 all off the men's tees, yeah. Which, What's the um, point of having ladies' tees, then? Well, uh, good question. Don't shoot the messenger. OK, uh, I'm not. <laughs> she's, you know, she, she admitted she really struggled off the men's tees when she last played it. She's played it before. Uh, she's one of the bigger, biggest hitters on the LPGA Tour, but, um, yeah, it's a big, big disadvantage for her. Mm. OK, what's the latest betting from Paddy Power, Ian? 
Yeah, so we're four places here this week. Uh, Cameron Champ and Kevin Kisnerhead are betting at five to one. Billy Horschel and Brand Snedeker next in eleven to two. Bryson DeChambeau, Kevin Na eleven to two. Charlie Hoffman and Gary Woodland at seven to one. Pat Perez, Kyle Stanley at uh, fifteen to two, and it's eight to one back. Keep going, keep going. Let's have keep the full going, field. Man. Yeah, Charles Hill the third, Luke List eight to one. Emiliano Grillo, Graham McDowell nine to one. Harold Varner the third, Bubba Watson at ten to one. Sean O'Hare, Steve Stricker at twelve to one. Pat and Kazire, Brian Harmer fourteen to one. Tony Finau, Lexi Thompson. 16 to 1, Luke Donald and Andrew Landry at 28 to 1. Steve, first of all, before we say who's going to win, who's going to have the most fun out there? I was looking at some of those pairings and I think there could be some fun ones, but there are also some where you think, wow, how are they going to get? And I'm thinking Deshombo and Nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The scientist yeah, I mean, and the snail. Well, it'd probably be dark before they finish as well. They're both really slow, aren't they? Deshombo's very methodical and, and yeah, I. I, I, I it's all about cohesion, isn't it, in these pairs of events? And you're right, I don't see them having a lot of fun. I think Luke Donald's got a, a tough draw there. Andrew Landry's a really miserable b bastard, if I'm allowed to use that word. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I can't see much fun being had in many of the groups, actually. Hoffman? This was a re uh, Hoffman and Woodland, yeah, yeah, yeah. They could have a reasonable amount of fun, but... Um, you know Harold Varner. Poor old Harold Varner's got Bubba Watson. You know, <laughs> wouldn't take much for wouldn't take much for Harold Varner to wind him up. Um, so yeah, I, th th there's hardly anyone that appeals in this tournament for me. Okay, um, so it's not really banter fest. Let's talk about more importantly, who is going to win, Steve? <laughs> I think our, our old friend, the Greyhound, uh, Cameron Champ, making his debut in this competition. You've got a perfect partner. I mean, Kevin Kisner, Kisner and Champ. I mean, what a beautifully balanced combination that is. Um, Kisner's played in the last two uh, uh, shootouts, but he's had Kevin Chappell as his partner, so he's got a massive upgrade here in terms of Cameron Champ. Um, you know, I, I think Champ, you know, we've, we've spoken about him many times, one of the best pl young players in the planet already. I mean, he's making his debut, but I think he'll take to this competition well because the, the format takes pressure off him. He'll be able to play super aggressive golf, um, you know, really take advantage of his power, you know, knowing that the format provides that margin, margin for error. So, um, yeah, Kisner is a really steady player. Uh, churns out fairways and greens, typically putts very well. And I just, I just think he's the perfect foil for Champ. So, um, yeah, I think uh, yeah, Champ will be blasting away. Uh, Kisner will be making no mistakes. And um, in, in all of those three formats, I, I think they're a really potent combination. Kisner will enjoy playing some of his second shots from where Champ leaves him, won't he? he won't be used to all absolutely, that, Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. It's, it's such a potent combo. And you know, Kisner's been on, on Twitter saying um, you know, he's doing a bit of extra practice because he's trying to impress Cameron Champ. You know, he, I think Kisner's sensing a really easy $410,000 check. You know, there's plenty of money in this. Wow. $410,000 for each of the, uh, the winning team. And Kisner's probably thinking, blimey, I've got... I've got a hell of a partner here. This is going to um, this is some easy money here. And and, and, and Kisner, Kisner finished uh, seventh last time out in the RSM Classic. He bounced back to, back to form last time out. Champ's made an awesome start to the season, as we, as we all know. So, yeah, I don't think you should look past Champ and Kisner. OK, the, the Greyhound has definitely been the man of the postcast in 2018, isn't it? Are you going to stick with him as well, Ian? No, I'm going to go with two players next in the market, Billy Horschel and Brant Snedeker. Uh, both players in very solid form at present. Looking through the records at the event, they've played with different partners at times. Both have excellent records. Horschel since 2013 has gone 4th, 3rd, 4th, 3rd, 12th. Snedeker since 2013 has gone 4th, 10th, win 8th, 7th. I think the combination of Horschel's ball striking and Snedeker's putter will make them a great combination. They look very dangerous this week. I massively respect the combination of Champ and Kisner, but uh, I think Horschel and Snedeker will be only played the week at 13-2. to two. And I might, if I can get a price in the dual forecast, Champ Kisner and Horschel Snedeker will play that too. OK, any other selections, Steve? No, I, I totally respect Ian's uh, team there. They're, they are big dangers. Uh, did, did Snedeker win with Jason Duffner one year? Yes, yeah. that's right, yeah. So he's got a very similar sort of player in Horschel there. Um, yeah, I think they're dangerous. I think the defending champions, uh, Stricker and O'Hare, I think they're a fair price. Um, so, yeah, but it's probably between those three teams. When is it, Steve? Friday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay, fine, excellent stuff. Uh, anything else we want to add on this tournament? Any uh, twosomes that you don't particularly fancy, Ian? Um, probably the Varner Watson one. They're both. They can be quite fiery at times, both of them. If it doesn't start going well, they could probably be able mm. to back with the washing pretty quickly. Yeah, Steve. Anything for you that you think you'd want to avoid? I think Finau and Thompson is, is weak. I think Donald and Landry is weak. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there, there's not, there's not a lot of teams there. Um, Harmon and Kaziri looked an interesting combo, but Harmon was a late entrant. Davis Love was originally going to be in there, so um, maybe they're a little bit unsettled. No, no. I just see Champ and Kisner are going to win, and then Horschel and Snedeker maybe second. Are you getting um, properly stuck in on this, or are you treating it as a yeah, silly yeah, season? 
no I'm, 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 I'm happy to get stuck in because um, I just saw such a standout team there and um, yeah it, it never used to be on the telly this one it's only the last couple of years to be on the telly so yeah I'm going to have one last well I say probably have two last hurrahs we've got one one tournament next week and then uh, you know recharge the batteries over Christmas smashing okay let's do the uh, South African Open next Introducing Paddy Power's Beat the Drop. We're giving every customer 30 days free entry and a grand up front. It's up to you to keep it. All you have to do is answer 10 questions correctly. Play now at beatthedrop.paddypower.com. Oh, baby. Welcome back for the last time on the Golf Postcast in 2018. It's Steve Palmer and Ian McLaughlin joining me, Bruce Millington, to look ahead to the South African Open which takes place at the Rand Park Golf Club. And Ian, there's a lot of local uh, players peppering the top of the market. Yes, we're eight places because there's about 475 for this event. Louis Eustace and Heads are betting at 13 to 2. Matt Wallace next in at 11 to 1. Dylan Fratelli at 12 to 1. Brandon Grace at 12 to 1. Charles Schwartzel, 16 to 1. Dean Burmester, 20 to 1. Uh, Eric Van Rooyen 25 to 1 and 30 to 1 bar. Ian will stick with you quickly just to tell us what kind of player this test suits. Yeah, looking through that Ram Park, it's uh, it hosted the 2017 Joburg Open, and looking through that leaderboard, it was it was a mix of bombers are up there, good iron players. I think it's more it's it looks more of a ball striking test to me. I didn't get too much of a sample watching that 2017 Joburg Open. I didn't get to see too much of that tournament, but looking through it, looking through the scorecard get a few pitches of course I think it's going to suit power players this week right, Steve is your main selection a power player yeah he's got a lovely mixture of the two actually I, I, I agree it's a ball strikers test I mean we've got 240 runners this week um, so yeah a lot of people look at a, how are they going to fit them all in yeah, we've got five two, balls we've got two courses we've got two courses oh. Yeah, it, this is basically the Joburg Open has become the South African Open they've scrapped the Joburg Open and it's now named the South African Open but it's, it's the same as it was for last year's Joburg Open 240 runners Rampart Golf Club uh, one round on each course, first two days, and then all over to the to the uh, Firethorn course for the final two rounds. Okay, who's your main uh, selection? And, then, Steve? Uh, yeah, Dylan Fratelli is uh, is the number one selection. Dylan Fratelli absolutely bursting with form and confidence, uh, and I like the way he's going to approach this tournament. He, there's a lot, of, there's not a lot of pressure on Dylan Fratelli. He's got a US Tour card in his pocket. He he, he earned his US Tour card at the end of September in the Web.com Tour uh, finals. So anything that happens over in Europe is a bonus. He's a Joe Berg man. He's playing in his home city. Uh, he finished 42nd in the Joburg Open last year on this course, uh, but he was flagging a bit because he won the Mauritius Open in a playoff the previous Sunday. I, I, th I think that's a decent spin in the circumstances. Yeah, the course knowledge is there and the form is there. He was 21st in the Ned Bank um, uh, when you were fuming about his antics with the drop. Yeah, um, but then, then he followed that up with a pair of 66s over the weekend of the DP World Tour Championship, finished 7th there. And on Sunday, he signed off with a 65 in the Mauritius Open, the best score of the day. Um, finished fifth in Mauritius. Um, found over found eighty percent of the greens and regulation in Mauritius. Bogey free on the Sunday. Played his final seven holes in five under par. So he's been driving his ball beautifully over the last few months. His, his game's never been in better shape, and uh, yeah, I think this looks a great opportunity for Fratelli. Steve, by the way, that course in Mauritius looked absolutely lovely, didn't it? Oh. Yeah, yeah. What a location. I mean, the sea just uh, perfectly. Uh, perfect colour as well and yeah it does make me yearn to get back there that and the chameleon is it the chameleon or the what's the one in mexico that they played the other week oh el chameleon yeah i don't yeah, know how you pronounce they el look chameleon, absolutely yeah. gorgeous yeah really there's a whole nice. world out there isn't there if you've got enough bunts to get get Please around tip more winners next year steve so we can just go around the world playing golf courses like that it'd be so yeah, good wouldn't yeah, it yeah 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 that's it that's the plan ian back to reality what's your main tip for the south african open it's another South African. It's quite hard not to pick a South African this week, and it's uh, Eric Van Rooyen. Uh, had a solid end to his season. Three top 30 finishes in his last four Rolex Series events. Ended up finishing 38 in the race to Dubai. An excellent showing for a European Tour rookie in his first season. Ram, Ram Park is a course that rewards power players, and Van Rooyen is certainly one of those. He shot minus 20 at Ram Park on the way to a second place finish in this Joburg Open last year. I think he's one of the most talented players in the lineup. Plenty of upside in him. I think, I, I, sorry, I thought 28 to, 20 to 1 looked more than fair to me, and it'd be my main bet this week. Okay, and Steve, with eight places from Paddy Pell, there's plenty of each-way value. Who else are you going to go for? 
Yeah, I've got three against the field this week. Next best is Charles Schwarzel. I mean, it'd be an absolute travesty if the name of Charles Schwarzel is not on the South African Open trophy at, uh, you know, at the end of days. He's come close so many times. He had a five-shot lead with five holes to play in, in the 2015 edition. He lost to Andy Sullivan in a playoff. It, his tournament form figures read 15-3, 32-2, 12-10, 16-31, 26-4-5-4-2-15. I mean, he, he's been knocking on the door in this tournament for, for decades. Um, Firethorn, as we discussed, a ball striker's track, long, tree-lined and demanding. And um, I've got a suspicion, it's only a suspicion that Schwarzel will uh, be in top order for this. There's no clues in his recent form figures, but during the Nedbank Challenge, he, he carded a nine at a par four in the second round, a real gut buster. When He, he was playing well up to that point, and uh, he was very bullish about the state of his game prior to the Nedbank. He, he was saying he's, he's in the form of his life to reporters and whatnot. So, um, yeah, I, I, I'm taking him on his word that he's, uh, the form is there. And, um, you know, his record in European Tour events staged in South Africa is, is superb. So, uh, yeah, Schwarzel will chase home uh, Dylan Fratelli. And who will be third? And Romain Langask will be third. I mean, we were on Langask last week, finished 23rd in Mauritius last week. A uh, very talented French youngster. He just got his European Tour card back, finished fifth at Q School. Uh, he won a Challenge Tour event by three shots in September, finished fourth in the Challenge Tour Grand Final, so full of form, and he's got a, a solid record in Africa. He was uh, runner-up in the Kenya, Kenya Open on the Challenge Tour. Uh, he's had a few decent spins in South Africa, and um, he was third in the Mauritius Open last year. So, um, yeah, I think Lang Ask uh, is a decent each-way price. Lovely, and Ian, how many other selections have you got apart from Eric Van Royen? Just two more, and it's uh, the next best is last, last week's winner, Kurt Kitayama. Um, I was incredibly impressed with him. It was an excellent display of driving iron play. He led the field in driving distance for the week. Average distance off the tee was measured at 326 yards. Uh, he looks to be another product on the young US golf conveyor belt at the moment. Obviously, his debut at Ram Park. There's not too many form lines with any of the players here, really. So I think his game looks to mesh well with the course setup. I was a little surprised. I thought he'd be a little bit shorter than what he was, given his recency bias of being a winner last week, playing great golf. So I was a little surprised to see 50 to 1 was available. Happy to play at that price. And an outsider is Tapio Pulcanon. Good finish to his season with a 10th place finish at the Turkish Airlines Open. Power player is becoming acclimatised after finishing his first full year in the European Tour. Also, he finished third at Ram Park in the 2017 Joburg Open. Has Improve as a player 12 months on. He'll complete my lineup this week at 66 to 1. Who? Tapioco Pat Cannon? That's another greyhound. No. <laughs> Tapio Pul Cannon. Finnish player. Tapio Pul Cannon. He's been put up before. Hand. Tapio yeah, yeah, yeah. Pul Cannon, yeah? Pul Cannon. He's friends with Happy <coughs> Gilmore. Just tap it in. Just tap, tap, tap it in. I still don't know what his name is. Tapio Pul Cannon. Cannon. It's Tapio Pul Cannon. Two Pul Cannon. Pul Cannon. P U L K A W N E N. Okay. All right. Nice. Okay, chaps, thank you very much. Anything else you want to add to that tournament, or are we done? We're done. We're done. That's it. Yeah. And that's it for a year on the Racing Post Golf Postcast. Steve, Annie, and I want to thank you so much for your company every week. You've been utterly professional, great fun, and I've enjoyed doing these postcasts with you. And I know from all the feedback we've back we get from Twitter and elsewhere that your efforts and your input are greatly appreciated, guys. All set for Christmas, Steve? Yeah, yeah, very much so. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of excitement in my house. Got two people that love Christmas more than anyone else in the world, I think. Yeah. Um, does yeah. Nicola like it as well? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm the Grinch and, and wife and child Have you got are really the tree up, up for it. already? Yeah, tree was there 1st of December. All the lights were out 1st of December. Um, all the wives were, all credit to her. I, I, I had zero input and it's just all, all taken care of. All I've got to do is buy her a nice present. What does she want? Does she leave hints or not? She drops the occasional hint, yeah. She's after laser eye surgery, I think, which is uh, quite, a, quite a pricey one. But so I suppose with the amount I gamble, it's fair enough, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's about four grand, that, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's about a third of what I stake at <laughs> Golfing Week at the moment. But yeah, I, I, I think I should probably get her there. Excellent stuff. And Grace, what does she want? What's top of her list? Um, she just likes all the little things. She hasn't um, got to the age yet where she... Does she watch the expensive. adverts on children's TV and say, I yeah, want yeah, that, yeah, I want yeah. that, I want Channel that. 5, yeah, in the mornings, Channel 5's on, and uh, you know, get that for, let's get that for Christmas, let's get that for Christmas, and mm. I, I just say yes to everything. Oh, you know, I'm a bit of a soft, stuff. bit of a softy. Yeah. Ian, have you got time off over the festive period? Yeah, I'm beginning to wind down now. Um, it's my brother's wedding on Saturday, so it's kind of a three-day family event wow. in Dublin, the countryside, and then back to Dublin on Sunday. So that's going to be a big event. I'm looking forward to that. And then I slowly start to wind down before a nice break over to Christmas, coming back fresh for the Tournament of Champions at the start of January. Brilliant stuff. Hope you have a great Christmas, Ian. Thank you so much. Cheers, Steve. Steve, you're back tomorrow, I believe. We've got an Arras postcast, haven't we? 
Yes, World Championship Hours is sneaking up. So, uh, yeah, me, Steve Davies, Master of Darts, and Henry... Uh, what's Henry's nickname? Can't remember Henry's nickname. Double H. Double H is on, yeah. Double Henry H Hardwick. Hardwick's hosting, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, That'll yeah. yeah. Are you going to go for Van Gerwen, or do we have to wait? Well, I've lost a bit of faith in Van Gerwen. No, I've got some alternatives. Have you? Yeah. Price Van Gerwen there, I'll mention as well. Paddy Power, top price, Michael Van Gerwen. If you oh, really? Steve. Yeah. Oh, I think yeah. he'll I think. What, what price have you gone there, Ian? I'll double check for you now. I just got told as I was walking in to let Did Steve you? know that we've gone Van yeah, Gogh yeah, on top price. I think, right. so think it drifted two to one. I think it drifted two to one before the tournament starts. But uh, are you going, Steve, this year? Uh, not as not as things stand. No, no. But um, yeah, we, we, we that see how we go. Could change, could it? Yeah, Thirteen day, Michael yeah. Van Gogh, and we probably Thirteen will go eight. if he starts to drift. We'll probably go with him. I think we're taking a what strong position against him. Thirteen day at present. Thirteen to eight, Van Gogh. In okay, right, great stuff. So we've got the darts. On Wednesday, we've got the football postcards on Thursday and we've got racing on Friday. Hopefully you can join us for them. And don't forget, hopefully the Racing Post golf postcards will be back every week with you at the start of January. Introducing Paddy Power's Beat the Drop. We're giving every customer 30 days free entry and a grand up front. It's up to you to keep it. All you have to do is answer 10 questions correctly. Play now at beatthedrop.paddypower.com. Light the candle, tiger!